Good morning. Welcome to the service on the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. Our opening sentence this morning is, Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and healed every infirmity among the people. The Lord is our light and life. O come, let us worship. May Christ, the true, the only light, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We've not loved you with our whole heart. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We're truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. Blessed are you, sovereign God creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts, your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. I've just come down to the sea this morning to read the first reading from James chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. A warning against prejudice. My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and another comes in who is poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, you can stand over there or else sit on the floor, well, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble, noble name you bear? Yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law as found in the scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. For the person who keeps all of the laws except one is as guilty as a person who has broken 
all of God's laws. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now for Psalm 146. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers or in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are those who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but fr frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. God, our creator and redeemer, inspire your people in prosperity or adversity to turn always to you eternal source of life, health, and goodness, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke, chapter 9, verses 28 to 36. Jesus took Peter, John, and James up a mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was transformed. His clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared and began talking with Jesus. They were glorious to see, and they were speaking about his exodus from this world, which was about to be fulfilled in Jerusalem. Peter and the others had fallen asleep. When they woke up, they saw Jesus' glory and the two men standing with him. As Moses and Elijah were starting to leave, Peter not even knowing what he was saying, blurted out, Master, it's wonderful for us to be here. Let's make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But even as he was saying this, a cloud overshadowed them and terror gripped them as the cloud covered them. Then a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. When the voice finished, Jesus was there alone. They didn't tell anyone at that time what they had seen. The gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Listen to Simon Peter today as he is on a roller coaster of highs and lows on his journey as a disciple. Simon says, the day after Jesus had blessed five loaves and two fish, and it had multiplied so we could feed more than 5,000 people and still have 12 baskets full of bread left over, he took all 12 of us disciples away from the crowds to pray together. After spending time in prayer, he asked us a question. What are people saying? Who do they think I am? We told him that we had heard people saying he was Elijah come back to life, or perhaps one of the other ancient prophets. Then he asked us what we thought. Ever since he first called us from our fishing boats, I believed he was the Messiah that we've been waiting for. As he asked the question, I heard a voice inside me saying, he is the Messiah. It gave me the courage to say, you are the Messiah, the son of God. The others looked at me in amazement, but Jesus looked right into my eyes. 
He knew that I'd heard from God. And he said I was the rock, the foundation he would build on. And he would give me the keys of the kingdom. Then he said those words again that I struggle with. Don't tell anyone. This time, though, it was because he wanted to explain to us what it really meant that he was the Messiah. And I didn't want to believe what I was hearing. Listen to what Jesus told us. He said that when he got to Jerusalem, the religious leaders were going to reject him and his teaching. And they would whip him and kill him. But on the third day, he would be raised from the dead, just like Jairus' daughter. Then he continued by telling us it would be difficult for us who were his followers. At this point, I'd heard enough. I just couldn't believe that the man I believed in my heart to be the Messiah and our hope was going to be abused and killed. I cried out and I said, no, Lord, this cannot happen to you. The others were shocked that I spoke up. I think they were all feeling the same, but no one else had the courage to speak. Jesus looked at us for a moment. Then he told me off and his words just cut right through me. He said I was talking from the world's point of view, speaking just like Satan would to tempt him away from his father's plan. I was very hurt. For a week I struggled on. I wondered, should I leave the group of 12? But where would I go? Our rabbi has the words of eternal life and the hope of the kingdom. Jesus called out to James and John and me to go with him. And he took us to Mount Tabor to be alone and to pray with him. We climbed quite a long way up and then we stopped to pray. James, John and I must have fallen asleep. After a while, I lifted my head and opened my eyes. What I saw is etched into my memory. Jesus' face and clothes became brilliant, glowing white. There was an aura all around him. There were two men beside him. The three were discussing something very seriously, and I could hear what they were talking about. It was the same thing he tried to tell us a week ago about what would happen to him in Jerusalem. I realized that the two men were Moses and Elijah. This was amazing. I wanted to stay there and remember the moment. Because Jesus had included me in the invitation to witness this event, I felt forgiven for those words I said because I didn't want to lose him. And I said, let's make three tabernacles, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for you. I thought in that way we would always remember. I didn't know what else to say or do. As I was speaking, though, a cloud came down upon us all. And we heard God's voice say, this is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. So Jesus is the Messiah, the son of God. And we must listen to what he says. It must be true that he will be abused and killed in Jerusalem. How am I going to be able to handle that? When the cloud lifted, our Lord was there alone with us. Then he asked us not to tell anyone what he had seen and heard until everything had happened that he told us about. When we came down the mountain, there was a crowd around the other disciples. But when the people saw us, they were very happy and came over. One of the men said his son was possessed by an evil spirit. The disciples weren't able to expel it. Bring the boy to me, our Lord said. The evil spirit recognized Jesus immediately and threw the boy into a seizure. The father said, if you can, please heal him. This wasn't what Jesus wanted to hear. He gently said, 
anything is possible if you believe. The father cried out, I do believe, help me to stop my unbelief. The crowds around were increasing, so Jesus commanded the spirit to come out. The boy had another seizure and lay on the ground, but he was at peace. The spirit had gone. Later on, the other disciples asked why they couldn't heal a boy. And he said, sometimes it takes deep prayer and fasting so that God can work through you. Let's leave Simon Peter there with Jesus. What can we apply, apply to ourselves from what we heard today? For me, I find Simon Peter's story very encouraging. He wasn't perfect, was he? But so humble and enthusiastic. He often said or did the wrong thing. And yet God had a plan for his life. It was to him the keys of the kingdom were given and the authority to lead the church. May each of us be aware of God's plan for our life. And like Simon Peter did, always come back to him for forgiveness and direction. In the words of the confession, may we delight in his will and walk in his ways. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, as your son drew apart to be in prayer with you, we offer our prayers this morning. Help us to know the glory of your presence among us and to see more clearly the beauty of your holiness. Inspire your church today with a renewed vision of your glory so that we and all your people may walk as children of light and by your grace reveal your presence in the world. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray to you for our world with its joys, its sorrows, and its wrongdoings. We pray for the leaders of the nations, especially our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, and our Premier, Doug Ford. Give wisdom to all who are in authority over others. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you know what it is to experience the joy and wonder of God's presence. And then to go down into the depths of despair and to suffer rejection and pain. We give thanks for your compassion and bring to you the needs of those who are in our thoughts and hearts today. Those in Afghanistan, the injured, the bereaved, those trying to escape, those in the United States who lost loved ones in the bombing, be their comfort. Those in danger from hurricanes, fires, floods, earthquakes, and the pandemic across the world. We pray for the safety of all those responding with help, medical aid, food and water, and those helping to rescue 
and evacuate. We remember all those suffering in our parish, those who are sick, those who mourn. I invite you now to name those known to you. Help them and us to know that you are with us, that you are there with the power to bring comfort and healing of body, mind, and spirit. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, in the week that lies before us, may we reflect your love in the way that we live our lives so that the world can see we are followers of Christ and by our words and actions, draw others into your loving care. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our collect for the day. Almighty God, on the holy mount, you reveal to chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured. Mercifully deliver us from the darkness of this world. Change us into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us pray over our gifts. Holy God, receive all we offer you this day and bring us to that radiant glory, which we see in the transfigured face of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.